Hello and welcome to this video on how to use the idle development environment and run Pygame games in idle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch idle, I-D-L-E, should have installed when you installed Python. If you haven't yet installed Python or Pygame, you need to go watch that video first. So the idle window looks like this. You can run Python commands directly in this window. So some commands you've seen before, such as print um, work, you can do simple arithmetic, you can store values um, and do math and that sort of thing. So this is really good for if you're running simple one line programs or just testing things out. What we're going to want to do though is actually create a new Python file. So we're going to go file, new file, and that's going to open a blank window. So I'm just going to split screen these. Sorry, back to my other screen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write a small program here. Just something really simple to show you how you can run it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you're going to need to save your file. So I'm going to go file save as, and I'm going to find the place that I want to save this file. Oops. And I'm going to save it as um, Now you'll notice that it's saved and I can go to run, run module. So you can also hit F5 on your keyboard and it will run the program in your shell window. So even if you've closed the shell, if you run the module, it'll open a shell and run your program there. Okay, so that's a little introduction to idle. Not very much there, but it gives you a bit of what's going on. So the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need how to get started with Pygame. So there is a really good textbook online or website online with lots of sample code. It's called Program, Program Arcade Games with Python and Pygame. If you just Google Arcade Games Pygame, usually you can find it. Um, if you're in my Google Classroom, there is a link to this in the Getting Started with Pygame guide. So you can, if you're on the homepage, it gives you the whole table of contents. These first four chapters are all just introduction to Pygame. So people in my class have usually already done introductory Pygame stuff, so they can skip that. Chapter five is where they actually introduce how to use, or sorry, in, that was all introduction to Python stuff. Everything in the first four chapters is introduction to Python. Chapter five is where we first introduce Pygame. So they go through some information about graphics. Um, there's some good information here. For example, when we're looking at the computer coordinate system, we're not looking at a standard Cartesian plane as we would see in math, where the origin point or zero zero is in the center of the screen. Um, that's also how you see it on CodeHS or some other software like that. But instead, we're looking at an XY coordinate where X and Y are in the top corner y gets higher as it goes down and x gets higher as it goes to the right so if you were to put something on at an x of 11 and a y of 9 it would be located down in this corner of the screen okay um i'm going to do an overview of this page explaining the few pieces that you'll need to know to build a basic pie game structure um, but you can always go back and read this page at any point in time. It's just chapter five of program, program arcade games .com. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and import and initialize Pygame. So what this does is this actually tells it we're going to use the Pygame library and this tells it to initialize the game engine. So those are, this one is a standard Python thing. Um, for importing libraries, this is within Pygame how we initialize that game engine, okay? So you will need to have those at the top of every single Pygame file. Now, this warning here, don't name any file pygame.py, is because import Pygame is importing the closest library file called Pygame. If you name your file Pygame, 
it will try to import itself and that's going to cause you all sorts of weird errors. So just make sure you never call your file. You never save as Pygame. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that over to my Python window here. Okay, so I've imported the library and I've initialized the game engine. Now we can define some colors. They've defined a few for us, so we're just going to use those. Um, you can go ahead and look up RGB colors if you want to look up other colors. Um, you just look up an RGB window and then red, blue, green in order. Um, they give you an example here using colorpicker.com and how to define colors. So you can also define any other variables you need here. Uh, this can be useful if you're using colors in your game, which sus I suspect most of you will be. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is open and set the window size. Just going to comment out this. So we're going to set a window size of 700 by 500. And we're going to set um, the screen. We're going to create a screen object that actually is going to um, set the display mode size of Pygame to size. So this doesn't actually do anything except create a variable, a tuple that stores 700 and 500. This is what actually sets the size. And then we also store that screen so we can use it elsewhere. Okay. Um, you can set the window title. Uh, this is going to create what it says at the top of your Pi game window. So actually I'm going to, um, I'm going to run this. But I'm going to warn you right now that at this point in time, there's no way to close the Pygame window. So we'll run it. It should open. It opens a, Pi a Pygame window and you can see it says Professor Craven's cool game at the top here. If I click the X, it's not going to do anything because I haven't told it what to do in that case. So I'm just going to leave that. Um, but you'll notice if I change this to Miss Langua's cool game. I don't know that I would ever call it a cool game, but you know. Now the Pi game window says Miss Langlois cool game. So that's all that's doing. You can see it's a 700 wide by 500 pixels tall window. If you want to change your dimensions of your window, you can do that. Makes it more square. Um, that's pretty much all we're looking for right now. All we're doing is Pygame's definitely working because it's been imported, it's initialized. We're definitely able to display a window. That's all we want to see at this point. Again, the X isn't going to work. I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. So, um, this is this is the main program loop here uh, for the user. We're actually going to ignore that for now. We're going to ignore the event processing loop stuff. And I'm going to scroll down to ending the program. So I want to be able to properly shut down my Pi game program. Um, what's going to happen now is that it's going to just quit. As soon as it opens, the window will quit. So if you run it right now to test what happens, it just opens and closes. Because all we do is we set up the game window, display it, and then we quit. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll back up to the main game loop and what we'll see is a couple of things. So I'm just going to copy this whole main game loop and then I'll go through the pieces with you. Okay. So this main program loop here, I'll put a So this is the main program loop that I just copied. So you know what? I also copied this loop until the user clicks the close button and use to manage how fast the screen updates. So we're going to look at these separately. First of all, done is a Boolean variable. It can be set to true or false, and we've set it to false. We're assuming when the game starts, the user's not done yet. Then we say while not done. So as long as the user's not done, we're going to loop through the main game logic. What we are going to do is every time there's an event, which means the user did something, clicked, 
with the mouse, clicked with a key, etc. We're going to check what the user did. So if the event type is pygame.quit, i.e. the user clicked um, the little X in the corner of the window, then we're going to set done equal to true. So as soon as done equals to true, not done is going to evaluate to false and we'll end this loop. So once the user clicks the little X, then done gets set to true. And when the loop finishes and it tries checks to see if it goes again, it doesn't go again. And we get down to that pygame.quit. So where before we had this check, it just ended automatically. Now it's not going to end until that X is clicked. So now when we run module, we finally have, when we click the X, the window actually closes and the Pygame terminates properly, which is what we want. Okay. Now a couple other things happened in there as well. Um, the clock was set up. So this was how fast the screen updates. So this would be your frame rate or your frames per second. So you set clock equal to pygame.time clock. So this is just making a variable, making it easier to access the pygame clock each time. And then what we do down here at the end of our while loop, at the end of the main program loop, we set clock.tick to 60. So this is 60 frames per second. If you want it to be 40 frames per second, you put a 40 there. Do whatever you want to do there. Um, the only other parts I haven't really explained is here. Screen.fill white. Uh, this is what allows the screen to have a white background um, or to clear the screen to white. So you don't want to put your drawing code above this because what you want to do is each frame, you're going to clear the screen. This is in the wrong spot. We're just going to go ahead and move that. Okay. We're not going to get to game logic. Um, this is all we want right now is just at this point, this updates the screen with what we've drawn. So we clear the screen, we update with the new drawing, and then we loop again. So all we have at this point is a blank white screen with our name at the top. When we click X, it closes, that all works. Now we know that Pygame is configured correctly and we have the correct base file. Now, if you look down, um, to opening a blank window or pygame base dot template. This will give you the base template file for starting any pygame. So anytime you need to create a new pygame, you can go ahead and just copy this base template file from this website and it will give you all of this basic stuff. And then you can just add your logic in, which I'll show you how to do in the next video. Um, in this one, they did put the drawing code should go here under fill white. Um, which for some reason in the code above, they didn't put in the correct spot. So that doesn't matter. Um, just if you're, every time you start, you can go ahead and copy this code. Note, they do use less colors here. So you might have to add some other colors. Uh, and that's how you can get your starter file every time you wanna start a new Pygame project, or you, even if you're just playing around and trying different things. So I'm gonna end the video here. And in the next video, I'm gonna go over how to do um, some graphics and actually start creating some animations.